All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Sally Clark. I am vice president here with AFG Group. We're a program management, project management, construction management, relocation management firm based out of the DC area with offices in New York and corporate offices um, around the nation. Today, we will be here um, for a presentation for a meeting, a tight deadline in the midst of a pandemic, protest, and political conventions. A few housekeeping notes before we get started. If you could please mute yourself and you can feel free to turn off your camera until the Q&A section so that just the presenter's faces are showing on the screen. We'd greatly appreciate that. If you have any questions during the, um, during the session, um, Feel free to add them into the chat box or add them, ask them at the end. Um, again, please remember to mute yourself or we will have um, Katie O'Connor who is helping to coordinate this to mute um, your mics. All right, so the great thing about this session is that we, um, the EPA, uh, GSA EPA Conference Center Renovation Project is an award-winning project uh, with the CMAA National uh, National cha uh, National Capital Chapter, and we were invited to also present this session at the National CMAA National Conference, which will be uh, occurring in two weeks. We thought this would be a great opportunity to present this to our um, to our AFG family first, um, and we hope we look forward to hearing what our group has to say on this. Um, this session is approved for one PDH credit, and if you need a uh, credit, please send an email to marketing at afgcm.com, and we will send you a certificate of attendance as well as a copy of the slides. Um, without further ado, I think that covers that for me. Just a reminder, please mute your mics and you can turn off your cameras so that just the presenters uh, uh, cameras are showing. We'd greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much. And Paul, take it away. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome. My name is Paul Smurlow. Uh, I'm responsible for most of our GSA work across the country. And as Sally mentioned, this session's presentation is entitled Meeting a Tight Deadline in the midst of a pandemic, protest, and political conventions. Uh, we timed this to be about 25 to 30 minutes, so it's not very long. If you could hold your questions until the very end, that'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, learning objectives. Uh, today, what we're gonna talk about is how construction managers can overcome challenges uh, utilizing good standard CM practices for schedule recovery, including, you know, the use of the obvious ones, you know, the use of overtime and weekend work, resequencing activities, you know, the project is planned one way, but perhaps, you know, based upon availability of materials and things like that, we have to do other things first. Uh, workarounds for equipment delays, hey, can we do temporary construction, things like that. Uh, and then adding, you know, additional crews, everyone knows, you know, there's a diminishing return on extended overtime, and sometimes you just need to bring in you know, some new folks in order to get work done. You know, all things that are in the construction manager's arsenal. In addition, also the utilization of new technology. You know, there's many new tools out there that are pretty cool that can now be used to facilitate stakeholder involvement, even when the stakeholders are unable to be at the job or in different geographic areas. Uh, even during black swan events, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, a black swan event is defined as an unpredictable event that is beyond what is normally expected of a situation and has potentially severe consequences. Okay, things, things, big things you don't expect that are going to happen. And as this project team for the new EPA Ruckelshaus Conference Center learned, black swans can arrive in entire flocks of more than one. Next slide, please. As I mentioned earlier, I'm Paul Smurlo. I served as the project executive on this project. Uh, presenting with me today are Suleiman Harris. Suleiman was the project manager for all of the audio, visual, and communications and technology aspects of this project. And also Joe Sorgan, who was our project engineer responsible for construction inspection and supporting the overall project management team. Next slide, please. Okay, the project. In December of 2019, to think, over a year ago, 
Uh, the U.S. General Services Administration selected AFG Group as the construction manager for the construction of a state-of-the-art conference center for the Environmental Protection Agency. The project included conversion of an old abandoned cafeteria space located in the historic Clinton Federal Building into a high-end 400-seat auditorium and conference center. The Clinton Building, for those of you unfamiliar, is part of the Federal Triangle in Washington, D.C., and it's located between Constitution and Pennsylvania Avenue, between the White House and the old post office, which is now the Trump Hotel. Okay, hmm. Okay, so in the center of everything. Uh, the conference center included, because it was a conference center, and you noted in the picture, uh, extensive AV, include audiovisual stuff, including video walls, public address systems, broadcasting capability, and similarly with all that equipment and the increased people load, upgraded HVAC and electrical as well. In addition, since it was a showcase facility, included high-end finishes, uh, including, you know, fancy carpet, woodwork, ceilings, light fixtures, and things like that. In terms of size, to give you an idea of order of magnitude, it was about 21,000 square feet. Uh, with an estimated construction value of about $18 million. Uh, while a challenging project, this was nothing unusual for AFG. Uh, we had done projects like this in the past. Uh, we didn't anticipate any major problems, especially by virtue of the fact that, you know, we work with GSA and these particular in GSA individuals as well, when numerous other projects we had done similar conference centers and we were familiar with this building, having been involved in you know, earlier renovations and other projects in the building. So we were familiar with the client, the type of construction and the building itself. So we didn't think that there was anything really unique or unusually challenging about this project. Next slide. Except for one thing. Okay, which was the one unique aspect of this project was the schedule. Okay, this project came with a hard completion date of December 2nd, 2020. Remember, now we were awarded this in December of 2019. So we had about 306 days for, for construction. Uh, the reason for that was the 50th anniversary of the Environmental Protection Agency was coming up, and the EPA had planned to utilize this new conference center for this event, okay, so it had to be ready. So the first thing we did was, you know, we reviewed the 306 day construction schedule. And we determined that, you know, while it was a challenging schedule, you know, there was nothing really unusual and that the delivery date of December 2nd, 2020 could in fact be delivered. Uh, and then the unexpected black swans began to arrive and I'll turn it over to Joey. So, <clears throat> The project started off strong through January and February uh, through demolition. In mid-March, the CDC started recommending people stay home from work if their jobs permitted. However, this was not an option for us. We continued to work and keep our focus on creating the space the EPA envisioned for their 50th anniversary party later in the year. Problems with our schedule first uh, took a hit in April with manpower becoming more inconsistent because workers started staying home out of precaution. In a few instances, our subcontractors had, subcontractors had workers testing positive for COVID on other jobs, forcing them to reshuffle their crews and who would be available to work on our site. Soon enough though, we had our first shutdown due to multiple workers testing positive for COVID. Now that it was directly impacting the project, our team needed to have a plan in place to be able to keep our workers safe and the progress moving forward, which Salaman will discuss. So as you heard, COVID-19 devastated the project, but like the rest of the world, we had to adapt and adjust quickly. When the COVID case occurred, we stopped work, we halted the project, and when we shut the project down, because this was new to the world, we didn't know how to handle it, this shutdown took about a week. So with this lost time, we worked with our contractor to figure out how we can work over a few weekends just to make this time back. With the guidance of CDC, we implemented mandatory safety protocols. We encouraged workers to stay home if they felt sick. We began checking for fevers among workers as they entered the job site by doing temperature scans. 
it was mandatory to wear your mask while working. Also, when possible, we separated the workers on separate sides of the project just to promote social distancing. So along with the grocery store workers and healthcare professionals, the CM staff and the work crew, we were also essential. We even had a special authorization letter that we carried around like a badge of honor, just in case we were stopped by the police while traveling to and from the job site. So with all these measures, it allowed us to manage this COVID challenge to get back to work. Joe, tell us what happened next. With the pandemic still spreading throughout the country, the effects of the pandemic were rippling further than just manpower on our job site. Um, the manufacturers we were working with were being affected and there was beginning to be delay on deliveries and the lead times were starting to get longer and longer. It became clear that some of the more critical items like our air handler unit would be significantly de delayed impacting the flow of work being done on site. Another situation we ended up facing was with our retractable partition wall. The wall was not going to be delivered until after December, meaning that it was not going to be delivered in time for the anniversary party. As there was nothing we could do to get it delivered on time, we needed to come up with a solution uh, to make sure that the EPA did not know there were things wrong. Our team then came back together to figure out solutions over these most recent hurdles. So at this time, it's late May, early June, and the air handling unit still isn't here. No sweat, right? Wrong. We knew humidity would soon become a problem, so we needed to get the space conditioned right away using temporary cooling. Luckily for the project, we already planned to use some temporary cooling, but with the air handling unit being delayed, it extended the rental time for this equipment. In addition, we decided not to bring certain temperature sensitive materials on site, such as wood doors until the permanent cooling was in place. We also had to take into consideration access to allow the permanent equipment to fit in the final place once it arrived. So we performed out of sequence work. So instead of finishing the entire CM wall, we left an opening and just went and worked in another location. With COVID, as Joe mentioned, there were other materials such as our divisible partition wall that was also delayed. And we knew at this time it just wasn't going to get here in time for the celebration. So instead of just leaving this huge opening in a, in a ceiling where the partition would go, we decided to temporarily finish the entire ceiling with ceiling tile so that the place can look complete until that partition arrived. Joe. Tell everyone what happened next. As the summer was starting and the pandemic continued to spread, this was not the only problem that we'd end up facing on our project. With social justice issues arising all over the country, the nation's capital would be the place where many people came to protest. At the end of May, in response to the murder of George Floyd by the police in Minnesota, protesters came pouring into the city to demand change. In just a few days, the number of protesters jumped from 1,000 to 5,000 to an estimated 10,000 people. These people came to the city um, as a result of the murder and the response from the country's leadership. Our project site would be directly affected by this because of the location being directly in between the Capitol building and the White House along Pennsylvania Avenue. The um, site was also located right next door to the Trump Hotel on our east side. And on the west side of the project site, the National Guard staged their vehicles and their um, soldiers. This meant deliveries and access were both restricted on both the east and west side of the building as a result. The street closures, parking restrictions, and the overall large presence of people forced us to put our heads together to find a solution that would keep the project running, but more importantly, keep the workers safe. So just imagine fighting your way through a corn maze just to get to work. That's what it was like with all the barricades and road closures. With the project being located in the center of action and not being able to predict if the protests would remain peaceful or, or, or turn completely chaotic, we decided to err on the side of caution and just shut the project down. Of course, the schedule was still a concern and a, and a major priority, 
So once again, utilizing best practices for recovering lost time on a project, we evaluated the critical path. Then we collaborated with our contractors to come up with the best days and times to perform overtime work outside of just weekends. Joe, tell us what happened next. Now, as the summer was winding down and we were focusing on getting the project to the finish line and open in time for the 50th anniversary party, we got shut down yet again. The Republican National Convention, which is a convention that norm officially nominates the Republican presidential and vice presidential candidates, was moved from North Carolina to Washington, DC. This was done as a result of the pandemic since there was no need for a large venue as they were not allowing people to attend to limit traveling. The convention was moved into the Andrew Mellon Auditorium directly above the EPA Conference Center's space. With the president and vice president both being present for the convention, there were heightened security needs resulting in the project being shut down from August 21st through the 27th to allow them time to set up and host the convention. Our team was not aware of the full shutdown until 24 hours in advance, with which um, the shutdown ended up running directly into the 2020 March on Washington, which was held over the weekend of August 28th. This march was in remembrance of the original March on Washington led by Dr. Martin Luther King in 1963, and the objective was to keep the pressure on reforming the ongoing social justice issues the country faces. The march was planned to last all weekend with thousands of people expected to be in attendance, and the large process would see people walking between the White House and the Capitol building again along Pennsylvania Avenue, right in front of our site forcing the area around our job site to be inaccessible. Now our team faced with, was faced with another hoop to jump through with very little notice as we prepared to shut the job site down for two weeks. We also had to find a way to now make up the time and the schedule and still be able to open on time, even though we were just a few short months away. So here we are yet again with another unforeseen disruption. This one is different though. It's two weeks. Two weeks is a long time. So at this point, time is running out. It's August. We have a de the summer delivery. So we had to involve the client, GSA, as well as the tenant, EPA, to get a better understanding of their specific need and use for this space. We knew things would be tight. So once again, we collaborated with our team to ensure we were concentrating our efforts on the critical areas for a December delivery. And if we had to be late, we wanted it to be just for minor non-critical items that didn't impact the functionality of the space. Our existing work crews had already been working overtime since May. So throwing more time at this problem really wouldn't solve it. So with that, we decided to bring in extra crew to work after hours in order to make up this time and also maintain um, social distancing in, 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 in light of the COVID situation. Through all these disruptions of COVID, equipment delays, protests, conventions, there was still another problem or challenge that we had with our stakeholders not being physically present on the site. So we knew that the client had major concerns when we were get on our calls um, with them uh, weekly, we could hear it in their voice. They were concerned about this project being delivered on time. And I know what you're thinking, or you may be thinking, well, didn't we provide pictures to them doing daily reports? Of course. And I know what they say, pictures is worth a thousand words. Sure, if you're taking a selfie, but not for an $18 million project that you can't see and you don't know it will be delivered on time. Next slide. So after some deep thinking and major considerations, in came the aha moment. Can't have an aha moment without aha music. <laughs> there is a new technology that utilizes spatial data capture that allows you to transform a physical space into a digital twin that immerses you directly into the space with 360 views. In addition 
This technology allows you to integrate with existing building technology, such as BIN, Building Information Modeling, as well as construction management software, such as Procore. The technology is very intuitive and easy to use. With the camera affixed to a tripod, an iPad, and a push of a button, you can be up and running in a matter of minutes. If you can work an iPad, you can perform these scans. So what exactly is this technology? It's called Metaport 3D technology. And this was the solution that solved the stakeholder distancing problem that we had by allowing us to bring the project to the stakeholder instead of the stakeholder coming to the project. So allow us now to bring the EPA Conference Center to you. Next slide. So let us remind you that this was an old abandoned cafeteria that we were transforming into a state-of-the-art conference center. We were able to show the stakeholder IT and AV pathways that we're going in. We were able to show the structural stability pile caps that were being installed. We were able to display the new steel beam that was being installed in order to support the structure while we were able to demolish the center beams. So as we continue to navigate the space, the architect was able to use this scan in order to address some of our RFI concerns when it came to structural stability. As you can see with this technology, it makes our physical space completely digital and immersive. The client was able to navigate the space and the project as they saw fit. As we move forward to the next scan of the space, which took place in late May, while protests were going on outside, we were getting busy with our project inside. So as you can see, this software is completely immersive. Although our stakeholders were restricted at home, they were able to walk around the project as if they were physically there. As you can see, our frame is going in for drywall. As we move forward to the month of October, now that all the protests are done and all the conventions are over, we wanted to be able to bring this scan to the client to ease their concern. So as you can see, a lot of the interior finishes are in place. We have ceramic tile, we have the drywall in place. Um, of course, if you had the actual link, you were able to navigate through this space as if you were there in a more seamless fashion. Um, we have in, uh, some technical difficulties, but you kind of get the idea of what we were able to bring to this client. Um, to resolve this problem. So we had a lot of the finishes going in, the ceiling tile, the, uh, the drywall, a lot of the AVIT back boxes were in place. And we were all also able to show the uh, IT group with EPA exactly where we stood and regarding the AV and IT cabling and the progress we had made on our AVIT rack room. So they were able to navigate the space and see all those things. And hopefully you get to see here, we also were able to take to the client a scan of the finished space, which, oh, here we go. This shows the, um, the interior of the IT rack room. As you can see, our rack is there, our cabling is in, the crack unit is in, our electrostatic flooring is in. So here was the scan of the finished space we were able to provide to the client just to ease their concerns about will we be ready in time for the event. So as we zoom directly into the auditorium, as you can see, the space is beautiful. The video walls are in place. The furniture is in place and it's uh, oriented for COVID-19. As we zoom out and head over 
to one of the conference rooms, you can see that all the furniture is there. We're completely ready for this great celebration that's about to take place. But there was one other area that we would like to visit on this tour just to ensure that we are ready for the event. And that is the, the main lobby. We were able to show the main lobby and show that the portrait of EPA's first administrator was in place. All the furniture was in place. Hand sanitizing stations were in place awaiting for our guests to arrive. So as you can see, we were able to present to our client complete construction progress from start of construction to the end of construction in order to ease their concerns and solve that problem of uh, stakeholder dis distancing. Now I'll turn it back over to Paul to wrap us up. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, thank you, Slam, and thank you, Joe. Uh, just to wrap things up, uh, I think we saw through the presentation that the use of good CMA standard practices when it comes to schedule management uh, can solve a lot of problems, uh, but the addition of new technology uh, really saved the day here, enabling you know, stakeholders to come together to solve problems under some very unique situations. Uh, the EPA was indeed able to celebrate their 50th anniversary on December 2nd, and you know the project's team and adaptability and you know working together, even though virtually, was what ultimately led to the success of this project. Next slide. So with that, that concludes our presentation. Uh, if you want to reach out to any of us, here's our contact information. And at this point, I'll open it up to any questions we might have.